The Civil War was a conflict over a way of life, the plantation agriculture of the South that depended upon slaves. So when Abraham Lincoln was elected president in 1860, his opposition to slavery was seen as a threat to the economic interests of the southern states. The South responded by seceding from the Union and founded the Confederate States of America in 1861. South Carolina was the first to secede on December 20, 1860. Mississippi, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, and Louisiana soon followed in January 1861, with Texas seceding on February 1st. Three days later, delegates from these states drafted the Constitution of the Confederacy. Jefferson Davis, former Secretary of War and Senator from Mississippi, was inaugurated as President on February 18th, before Lincoln himself would be officially inaugurated. In April, Confederate cannons fired the first shots on Fort Sumter, gaining control of the port of Charleston, South Carolina. Lincoln called out 75,000 volunteers determined to suppress the insurrection. It was the beginning of war. Virginia, North Carolina, Tennessee, and Arkansas seceded in the spring. The Confederacy had 11 states, the Union 23. The South had a population of 9 million, 3 million of them slaves, against 22 million in the North. Lincoln moved to keep the border states Missouri, Kentucky, Maryland, and Delaware loyal to the Union. West Virginia split from Virginia and became a state in 1863. To cut off supplies, Lincoln ordered a naval blockade of over 180 harbors of the Confederacy. In June, Confederates were pushed out of the Union strongholds in the North. On July 21st, the two sides met in the first major engagement of the war, the Battle of Bull Run, which ended in a Confederate victory. Confederate General Stonewall Jackson became a hero, and confidence in the South soared. To the West, in February 1862, the Union had better luck when Union General Ulysses S. Grant took Forts Henry and Donelson, driving the Confederates from Kentucky and Central Tennessee. As Grant advanced South, Confederate General A.S. Johnson concentrated his forces for a surprise attack at Shiloh Church. One of the worst battles of any American war, the Battle of Shiloh, raged for two days. At first, the South was successful, but with Union reinforcements, a counterattack forced a withdrawal. Both sides suffered almost equal losses. Shiloh would be a grim harbinger of the carnage to come. To the South, a Union fleet under David C. Farragut captured New Orleans. In the East, Union General George McClellan began a campaign to capture Yorktown and the Confederate capital of Richmond. McClellan advanced cautiously with an army of 100,000. At Seven Pines, about nine miles from Richmond, southern troops under Joseph Johnston stopped McClellan, but the battle severely wounded Johnston, and command passed to Robert E. Lee. Lee outflanked the Union in the Seven Days Battles, forcing McClellan to retreat. The threat against Richmond was denied. Another Union army under General John Pope was defeated at Cedar Mountain in Virginia. Driven back to Manassas, Pope attacked the Army of North Virginia in the Second Battle of Bull Run, but was pushed back across the Potomac. General Robert E. Lee had driven the Union out of Virginia. He seized the opportunity to launch a daring double offensive. If he could take Louisville, Indiana and Ohio would be open. In concert with his own planned invasion of Maryland, Lee dispatched General Braxton Bragg and the Army of Tennessee to attack Kentucky. Bragg and Union General Don Carlos Buell converged on Louisville. But Bragg maneuvered until it was too late, and his defeat at Perryville forced him to retreat to Chattanooga. In Maryland, McClellan learned of Lee's plan. So when Lee arrived at Antietam Creek near Sharpsburg, Virginia, McClellan was waiting with 70,000 troops. Lee's army was nearly decimated, but escaped. Upset, Lincoln replaced the largely ineffectual McClellan with General Ambrose E. Burnside, who began a new drive on Richmond. But Burnside lost nearly 12,000 men to Lee's entrenched forces at Fredericksburg. He was relieved soon after. At the start of 1863, Grant had failed to take Vicksburg, Mississippi. Leading the Army of Tennessee against the city, he had hoped to break the Confederacy's communications with the Far West. By summer, he was determined. With direct attacks failing, Grant cut off Southern General John C. Pemberton's forces from the interior and settled in for a siege. In Virginia, Burnside's successor, Joseph Hooker, was decisively beaten by Lee at Chancellorsville, but it was a costly victory for the South. Stonewall Jackson was mortally wounded. Lee seized the initiative by invading Pennsylvania, 
hoping to relieve some pressure on Vicksburg. Union General George Meade and Lee met just west of a town called Gettysburg. In the ensuing battle, the South suffered 28,000 casualties in three days, including 6,000 in Pickett's charge. Vicksburg fell the next day. In central Tennessee, Union troops forced Bragg out of Chattanooga and into northern Georgia. But Bragg caught exposed Union forces and defeated them at Chickamauga. A month later, under new command, Union forces dislodged Bragg from Lookout Mountain and Missionary Ridge. In March of 1864, Grant was appointed General-in-Chief of all Union armies. He launched a new drive on Richmond, but he and Meade suffered heavy losses in the Wilderness Campaign of May and June. At Cold Harbor, Grant made a mistake that cost the Union more than 6,000 casualties in less than an hour. After his first attacks were repelled, Grant laid siege to Petersburg, only 25 miles from Richmond, the Confederate capital. In the west, General William T. Sherman, Union commander of the Western armies, invaded Georgia with 100,000 men. General Joseph Johnston engaged him with 60,000 in a fierce battle at Kennesaw Mountain, but finally retreated to Atlanta's defenses. Johnston was replaced by General John Hood, a gallant but reckless officer, who was soon forced to abandon Atlanta to Sherman in September. Hood then invaded Tennessee, hoping to divert Sherman north. Though Hood won a costly battle at Franklin, Sherman ignored him and marched through Georgia virtually unopposed, cutting a swath of destruction to the sea. Hood's army was finally wrecked at Nashville, while Sherman occupied Savannah on December 21st. With the beginning of 1865, the Union tide was overwhelming. Confederate lines around Petersburg were finally broken at the end of March. Lee evacuated Richmond, hoping to link with Johnston's forces in North Carolina. But he was surrounded at Appomattox and surrendered to Grant on April 9th. Johnston surrendered to Sherman April 26th. President Lincoln was assassinated on April 14, 1865, 12 days before the final surrender of the Confederacy. The Civil War had the legacy of a truly modern war, over 600,000 dead, over a million American casualties for a cause that to this